The purpose of this video is to provide tips and guidance for conducting field surveys for the Crested Caracara in association with transportation projects. The Crested Caracara is a large, long-legged raptor with a distinct black cap that is listed as threatened in Florida by both the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Caracara also occurs in the western U.S., however, these populations are not federally listed. In Florida, caracaras are non-migratory, with adults having an average home range of approximately 3,000 acres, corresponding to a radius 1.2 to 1.9 miles surrounding the nest site. Caracara forage their home range, an area that they travel to obtain food, shelter, and mates during nesting and non-nesting seasons. Caracara in Florida historically inhabited native dry or wet prairie areas containing scattered cabbage palms, their preferred nesting tree. Scattered saw palmetto, slash pine, longleaf pine, scrub oaks, and cypress also occur within these native landscapes. Researchers hypothesize the vegetative structure of open grasslands, short stature vegetation, scattered shrub cover, and nest trees may be preferred by caracara due to its tendency to walk on the ground during foraging activities. The short vegetation structure may directly facilitate foraging by caracara and provide less cover for predators. Caracara primarily make use of six vegetative and land cover types, including cabbage palm live oak hammock, grassland, improved pasture, unimproved pasture, hardwood hammocks and forest, and cypress-pine-cabbage-palm mixtures. Caracaras are highly opportunistic in their feeding habits, eating roadside carrion and capturing live prey such as insects and other invertebrates, fish, snakes, turtles, birds, frogs, lizards, young alligators, crabs, crayfish, and mammals including rabbits, young opossums, rats, mice, and squirrels. Scavenging at urban dumps has also been observed. Caracaras also closely follow mowers in pastures, tractors plowing fields, etc., to capitalize on prey that may be exposed. Caracaras frequently make use of agricultural drainage ditches, cattle ponds, roadside ditches, and other shallow water features for feeding. Caracaras are monogamous and are highly territorial. They exhibit fidelity to both their mate and their home range. Breeding typically begins at three years of age. Although activity can occur from September through April, the primary breeding season is considered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to be October through March. The nest usually consists of two to three eggs with an incubation period of 32 days. The nestling period covers approximately seven to eight weeks and the post-fledgling dependency period is approximately eight weeks. Offspring departure from their birth home range occurs around 11 to 45 weeks post-fledgling. In southwest Florida, several juvenile gathering areas have been documented. These areas consist of expanses of improved pasture and citrus groves that are frequented by large populations of subadult and non-breeding caracaras. Please note that FDOT has a KML file on their Protected Species and Habitat page that depicts the locations of documented juvenile gathering areas. If a project is located within the designated U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service consultation area and suitable foraging or nesting habitat has been identified, 
it should be assumed that the area is occupied by Caracara and that the proposed activities may affect them. In order to determine the appropriate effect determination, surveys must occur using their designated survey protocol and guidelines. The USFWS has a 300-meter primary zone and 1,500-meter secondary zone in their survey guidelines. At this point in the process, a preliminary field assessment may be necessary to establish survey stations. Before conducting this field assessment, it is recommended that you print out high-quality aerial imagery that depicts the project corridor with a 300 and 1500 meter buffer. For transportation projects, it is prudent to make sure that all trees within 300 meters of the proposed project area are not active Caracara nest trees. Therefore, all potential nest trees within 300 meters should be marked on your aerial maps during this preliminary field review. The distribution of and number of survey stations will be dictated by the locations of these potential nest trees and how much area can be observed from a proposed station. Caracara nests are generally well concealed and most often found at the tops of single or small groups of freestanding cabbage palms that are over 10 feet in height. Nests have also been found in live oaks, bald cypress, Australian pine, and black gum. Caracaras usually construct their nests with long pieces of woven vines, stalks, and twigs that are trampled to form a depression 12 to 50 feet above the ground. Nest trees typically do not contain a thick understory of brush. During the preliminary field survey, proposed stations should be established and recorded on an aerial map or GPS based on the ability to observe Caracara activity and potential nest trees within 300 meters of the proposed road work. A general rule of thumb is to position the survey stations at sufficient visual distance with binoculars away from each other. In certain instances, when vehicle access is not possible, it is recommended that a small portable hunting blind is used. Once back in the office, Plot the proposed survey stations on an aerial map and prepare for USFWS coordination. Your district's USFWS assigned representative should be coordinated with through your Florida Department of Transportation contract manager, appropriate environmental management office reviewer, or the permitting staff. For Caracara, it is recommended that coordination occur during the month of November prior to the survey season to allow ample time to coordinate with USFWS staff prior to the holidays. USFWS coordination should include your district's ETAT reviewer for that county. During the meeting, review the entire corridor including a map that depicts the proposed survey stations and the rationale for each of the assigned stations. It may also be prudent during this meeting to go over all federally protected species that could potentially occur within the corridor along with your proposed species effect determinations. Meeting minutes should include these effect determinations and the minutes can be included as an appendix to your natural resources evaluation or permit application document. The USFWS Caracara Protocol dictates that surveys are comprised of nine events starting in early January and occurring every two weeks until the end of April. Surveys should start on a date that will ensure that the first event of each station occurs before January 11th. Surveys should begin approximately 30 minutes before sunrise and conclude at 10 a.m. From a safe position, a surveyor should be able to see both sides of the roadway in order to pick up Caracara activity. If a station is overlooking a potential nest tree, 
It is recommended that attention is on the tree for the first hour of sunrise to potentially identify caracara activity in or around the nest tree. During the survey, note all birds observed, especially birds that could potentially interact with the caracara, including bald eagles, vultures, and other types of raptors. All of these species would invoke a behavioral response from caracara if in close proximity to a nest site. Also, caracaras are frequently observed consuming carrion alongside with vultures, so the presence of vultures could indicate carrion and potentially caracara is in the vicinity. Caracara are easily distinguishable from other bird species based on their large stature, long legs, featherless face, which appears white or orange, large bill, white head with a black crest, and white panels on the wings. Adult Caracara have dark brownish-black on the crown, wings, back, and lower abdomen. The breast and upper back are whitish, heavily barred with black. The tail is white with narrow dark crossbars and a broad dark terminal band. Prominent white patches are visible near the tips of the wings in flight, which makes it very conspicuous in flight and can be recognized at a long distance. Subadults resemble adults but are more brownish in color. Juveniles have a similar color pattern but are brownish and buffy with the breast and upper back streaked instead of barred. Facial skin of juveniles is pinkish in color and the legs are gray. Conversely, adults have yellow-orange facial skin and yellow legs. Full adult plumage is obtained sometime after two years of age, with age of first breeding estimated at three years of age. Male and female cannot be distinguished in the field. If caracara are observed flying parallel to the road, the surveyor should make note of direction on map and, if possible, Follow the bird to determine the location that the bird veers off the roadway. The location and direction can often indicate the location of the nest site. The location where the bird veers off the corridor can be used as a modified survey station for the remainder of the survey event. The idea is to document the location that the bird is coming back to the roadway in order to identify potential nest locations to focus on during subsequent survey events. All Caracara observations should be logged onto the U.S. FWS Caracara datasheet and corresponding aerial, indicating times, flight direction, and flight destination. Early in the nesting season survey, Observations of caracara with tree branches or similar material is a good indication of nest building activity and an excellent indicator of a nest tree. Caracaras construct new nests each nesting season, often in the same tree as the previous year. Both males and females participate in nest building. Later in the season, caracara can be observed with food in their mouths heading to a presumed nest site. Note that observation of a caracara in a cabbage palm does not necessarily indicate a nest site. There have been multiple instances where a pair of caracara knew a person was watching, so they did not go into their nest tree, rather other cabbage palms. A confirmed nest tree will include observations of caracara, one or both, flying into the nest tree with nest material or food. In addition, observations of young in the nest tree or fledgling would also serve as nest confirmation. As previously indicated, 
Nest sites can be rather inconspicuous and in some cases hard to tell from cabbage palm vegetative debris. The USFWS requires the surveys be completed even when a nest site has been identified in order to document whether the nest season resulted in successful fledglings. Your survey report documents all data gathered during the survey events. At a minimum, the report should include the service coordination with meeting minutes, survey locations and times, date, survey staff, and results. Your CARACARA data sheets should be included as an appendix to the document. A summary table that includes all data may also be beneficial for the report. The CARACARA survey report is usually an appendix to the natural resource evaluation as part of the PDND study or the permit supporting environmental document to support the final effect determination and consultation with USFWS. If caracara are routinely observed along the corridor, but no potential nest site have been identified, you will have to provide evidence based on your survey data that the caracara is using the corridor for foraging, but the nest site is outside the study area. Data sheets with corresponding aerial maps will largely provide the evidence needed but it is recommended that you include a discussion section that summarizes the data and explains your assumptions of where nesting is occurring. Caracara surveys are typically valid for a period of two years. Therefore, the timing of your survey should consider the time frames of the submittal document. Often, a survey is carried out during the PD&D study with a follow-up survey during the final design. Coordination with the USFWS is recommended in advance of all surveys, and consideration of how the project corridor may have changed over time is necessary. This concludes our video of the Caracara survey process in support of transportation projects in Florida. Major deviations of this guidance should be vetted with your district's environmental management office, permitting staff, and your regional U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service representative for concurrence.